Father God, thank you for today. Thank you for Christmas and Christ and your son. Um, God, I just uh, ask that you be with Alyssa as she speaks and these kids here, how much she has to bring today for them, and that they put it to use in their lives. God, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so Merry Christmas, like Delayed Christmas. Can you all hear me? It's only a small. Can you hear me? Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. So. What did you guys get for Christmas? Like, I know some people name things, but what are some other things people got? Some socks. No way. I got like 10,000 pairs of socks. Okay. And, you know, the dryer needs the other socks. You're always missing a sock. You know how special you are? All my wrestling socks are folded. Oh, God. Well. So, everyone got Christmas gifts. You didn't have to look for them, did you? Mm-hmm. No, I did, of course, but you didn't have to actually look for them, right? I don't know. What are some things you have to search for? I want, I want you to give, like, some thought. What are some things you have to search for? Like, you have to dig for it or find it or follow clues to find it, like an inspector gadget or something or something like that. Like, okay. I have dogs. I like dogs. Yeah, our animals, I don't have pets, but animals like to hide stuff, especially cats, they're mischievous, right? They like to hide things, right? Do what? Oh, goodness. So, we're talking about finding things. Can you search for courage? No? No? Why not? Why can't you search for courage? Anybody else? Can you search for courage? Okay, how? Somebody tell me how. Somebody tell me how you can search. I heard a lot of guesses. How can you search for courage? Okay. How do you search for peace and quiet? How do you, go ahead, Hunter, how do you search for it? Maybe you search for it in your room with all the TVs and stuff off, right? That keeps it quiet. Maybe sometimes, okay. Or then you're not searching for peace and quiet. So, how do you search for things you can't see? Like, you can't see courage, right? But we have faith in God, though. So how do you search for things you can't see? Everybody got their coffee this morning? No. No? That's it. I hear crickets. I can drop a pen on the carpet. I can hear it. Goodness. Okay. So, has anybody ever tried to search for Jesus? Yes. Everybody's hand should be up. Everybody hands should be up. Because we search for Jesus and we search for Jesus in everyday life, right? When you're at home, in your quiet time, when you're praying, when you're listening for his voice, that's searching. So although Christmas is coming on, we've all come to the right place to search for Jesus. And it's called church. And where can we find Jesus the most? In the Bible. Okay. I need to say that a little bit louder. Bible. 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 Yay! Okay. So, can someone tell me to learn a poem last week? Oh, yeah, that's hard. You did. What did Tucker teach on last week? Uh, I didn't know who's paying attention. I remember Christmas Day. He, he taught about the, chef, the angels coming and singing the shepherds. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got some bells going off now. I got some light bulbs blinking. So, who were the first people to know about Jesus first? Okay. All right. So, the shepherds received a visit from angels, and the angel told them that Jesus Christ is going to be born, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. 
in search of a newborn king. When they got there, they asked, who wants to read now? I'm a ball and told somebody. At this point, Herod was the ruler. Herod was the ruler of Jerusalem. I'm thinking he was probably all, "What are you talking about?" So he called for the Jewish leaders. He knew that they all, they all, he knew they know all about the ancient prophecies that will point to this king. Sure enough, they knew the king was to be born in Bethlehem because of something a prophet named Micah wrote a hundred years before. Listen to what Micah said. Two on three. I'm going to point to somebody now. Marley, be you read for me? Pretty clean. Uh, uh, sure. Bethlehem, you might not be an important town in the nation of Judah, but out of you will come for me a ruler of Judah. Now that Herod knew the Savior was born in Bethlehem, he secretly got the wise men together. They told him the exact time where the star had appeared, and then Herod said, Okay, Tyler. <laughs> he sent him to Bethlehem. He said, Go, make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, bring me a report. Then I can go and worship this king. Now, we don't really think that Herod really is going to worship this king. No. No, no. Right? no, of course not. In fact, Herod wanted to do the complete opposite. He wanted to get rid of this new king. But at the time, the wise men didn't know that. They just carried on with their search. Finally, the star they followed led to Bethlehem. Seeing the star made them joyful. Their search had come to an end. They found the new king. They learned that his name was Jesus, and they worshipped him. So, I have three gifts in here. Okay, so, y'all have heard the story about Jesus' birth and the wise men. They brought three gifts. Anybody know what those gifts were? Cold, you know all of them? Look at you. Oh, no. Okay, Tyler Woodard. It was a PlayStation 4, <laughs> a brand new TV, and some sneakers. Oh, watch nice. Oh. Nope. No. No. Uh, Hunter, what were they? Goldberg and Titan 6. That is correct. That is correct. Okay, so the gold demonstrated that Jesus was king. The frankincense. Was a symbol of Jesus. Of Jesus was God's son. Y'all want to see what it smells like? Yeah. No. Not really. I have I have a few oils at my house, and that's what. Really? Yeah. I'm only gonna do it for a minute. That smells good, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the bird, that last gift, that gave me Jesus was to die on the cross. The wise men were filled with joy because they had finally found Jesus. It was time to them, for them to report back to Herod and then go home. But God told them in a dream, do not go back to Herod. So they went back to their home country a different way. Their search for Jesus sounds amazing, right? All the you know, different gifts and different things like that, especially because they were able to see Jesus face to face. Isn't that cool? Like they got to see the baby Jesus face to face and we did not. And worship him as king. The search was totally worth it. But even though this is a great story, you might be wondering, what does this mean for us? That's a good question. It's always important to ask how what we read in the Bible is important to our lives right now. The truth is, we're always searching for something. And I'm not talking about keys or a wallet or searching for that new video game or searching for that on searching on Amazon or Google for anything. We search for the truth, courage, and of all things, even joy. You see, it's easy for us to find joy at Christmas time. I mean, pretty much everyone has a smile on their face besides our buddy on Elf, right? When Christmas time comes around. But what about the rest of the year? Can y'all find joy in the rest of the year? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Right. Uh, my birthday. <laughs> What happens when we go back to school and take that first pop quiz? Uh, I hate pop quiz. I love school. What happens if we try to go out? Try to go out for the 
with a basketball team and realize that everyone around us is group four and just over the break. I mean, everybody can slam dunk on me. What you gonna do then? Okay. Well, you gonna get out of there. You can't be like cheap shot. No, you can't do that. No. How do we find joy? How do you find the same joy you find in March and April as you find in December? Christmas? Christmas presents and fancy foods are all great, but they don't give us joy that lasts. They, the only way we can find that's our joy is to Jesus, putting our trust in him and learning to live like him. We search the Bible and find what he did. We ask our moms and dads, small group leaders, or other trusted adults how they find we can pray and ask God to help us find joy no matter what is happening. So I leave you with this question to think about and to meditate on. And as you go into worship and small group, I want you to think about this question. How can we find joy all year long? How can your joy that you have for Christmas be the same in April, March? How can it be the same in the heat of the summer in July? God, we just thank you for this time together to learn of you. Help us to have joy, even in the midst of struggle. Help us to find joy, even when it's not Christmas, when it's not our birthday, when it's not a holiday that's celebrated with gifts and all kinds of joy around Thanksgiving. Help us find joy, even when things are tough. Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. Thanks in your son's name. We pray all these things.